Isn't Montana beautiful? Mmm, look at that. <sighs> Big sky country, guys, for a reason. Oh my gosh. Everybody. I'm Mama Baird and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be breaking into my elk. We got our elk back from our butcher. My husband got this elk on October 30th and it took a while for the processor to get it back and then we needed a freezer. So we were able to score a big chest freezer on Marketplace used for $150 which to me is a good deal. It's a big freezer, so we're gonna be able to keep this meat and this doesn't even make a dent in that freezer. So it'll be nice to have that. He still has four more tags, so he could get four more animals if he's lucky. Um, but this is our first elk ever and we're super happy about it and we thought we'd bring you guys along and show you how much meat you can get from one elk. If you're new here, I'm Carolina and I live in Montana. I do a lot of food bank hauls, pantry cooking, and canning and preserving on my channel. I'm also about to be breaking into more elk and wild game cooking. So if that's the kind of content you're into, I hope you'd consider subscribing. I would love to have you join my family. All right, so let's get into this elk. I'm gonna break it out of the box and I'm gonna show you what we got. Guys, I got it all laid out. I'm going to kind of count it now so you can kind of see. Um, we did get, this is mostly all of our burger, so like you can compare it to a pound of ground hamburger. So we have ground elk, and then this is breakfast sausage, a for sausage. So we got some of it made into breakfast sausages as well. So let's get it all counted up and tallied, and I'll tell you what we got. So we have 23 and a half pounds of breakfast sausage. And then this is all round steak, elk round steak. This wasn't weighed, but this probably one pound packages. This is probably two pounds, two to three pounds. So we got some bigger ones. These would be like your roasts. Um, if anybody has, like I said, this is my first elk. So if anybody has any experience with elk or even venison, uh, let me know on what you use these cuts for. This is just the cuts that the processor gave us. We just like, you know, we picked the sausage and mostly ground and then we have these ones. So if you have a good recipe for these, please leave them in the comments below for us all to know and for me to try. And then over here we have all of our sirloin. So this says sirloin tips and this looks like it's one big cut or it could be small ones, it's hard to tell. Um, and then there, oh, that's a round steak. Get over there, wrong spot. And then right here, sirloin, so this is a steak and stuff, so. Yeah, yeah. And let's count how many pounds of burger we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43 and a half pounds of round burger. That is great. And then we have all this meat. This feels so good to have some meat for our freezer, guys. So now what I'm going to do is try and organize this. Um, I do wanna to head to Winco today and get some of those sturdy reusable bags that you can fold them up and then they have a bottom. I'll show you when I get them. And then I will organize this in the freezer as well instead of just having them in those boxes because that's hard to lift up and stuff and I don't want things to get lost. So. Sausage, sirloin, brown steak, and lots of burger. Like what a good feeling to have this in our freezer. For now, until I get those Winco containers, I'm gonna put some of the meat into some reusable bags. I know all these, we had all these when I lived in Missouri and we do not have it here. So, still got the bags down. 
So I'm just going to put some of this in these bags for now and then get them in the freezer. And there we have it folks, kind of, kind of hard to see in the light, but we got all of our burger here, here's all of our sausage, and then all of our meat. All right. Here's the freezer I was talking about, got this for $150 off Marketplace. I think that is a steal. So we are very happy to have ourselves a chest freezer now. Now that I have all that meat loaded up in the freezer, I went ahead and thawed out one of the breakfast sausages because of course we gotta give it a try. So I'm going to make a breakfast bowl. I have some of these frozen hash browns, you see them? Kind of like home fries that I'm going to put in my air fryer to get those crisped up again. And I'm gonna, my plan is to have those on the bottom and then I'm gonna do some scrambled eggs and then make this elk sausage gravy to go on top with a little bit of cheese. I think it sounds pretty tasty. So let's get over to the stove and get started. All right, I got my two pans going. I'm gonna go ahead and light my fires, get them on a six. I'm gonna add a little bit of my peppered bacon grease to each pan, just to kind of get it hot, ready to go. You can tell this one looks a little dull compared to when you put the grease on it because I had it soaking overnight. So that kind of takes the sheen out of it. But if you just put the fat on there and get it hot, it'll bring it right back. Okay, I don't want that much weight. Get out of here, okay. And then here is our elk sausage. One pound of it. Much. I'm just going to kind of let it brown, get a nice crisp to it. And we're going to put our eggs in here. Oh, you got a couple eggs here. I'm just going to scramble up. My kids really wanted to help me this morning, but I just, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, you're just not in the mood for a helper. And my husband's home, and I was like, sorry, kids. I just, sometimes you just want to cook breakfast by yourself, you know? I do try and encourage my kids to get in the kitchen as much as possible, but it's okay to tell them no and to just get in there and do your thing, you know. I'm going to add two tablespoons of water to this because I've noticed that that really helps your eggs get fluffy. Somebody told me that trick to use that instead of milk and it really works. I really like it. It smells like bacon. Yeah, it's sausage. Apparently it's already smelling good. Well, I guess I did use bacon grease, so you could be smelling the bacon grease. Whenever I first started dating my husband, I was cooking for him, 
and he was not used to a woman who could cook. And that was before I got really good at it. I was kind of did basic cooking then. And I was literally just heating up one of my skillets with olive oil. And he's like, oh, what is that smell? That smells so good. And I'm like, it's olive oil. <laughs> and we still joke about it every time he smells something. I'm like, it's just olive oil. All right, we're gonna let that get a little more brown. Let's come do our eggs. Let's throw our hash browns here in the air fryer. Now my friend gave me this because she didn't have a basket. She only had this part. And now I, I didn't order the basket part, but it had like this little tray. And that looks pretty cool and it works fairly good. So I'm gonna put that in there. Put a max crisp. I'm gonna do it for six minutes. And then we'll check it. All right, our oil's hot. Now whenever you're adding and doing scrambled eggs, you want the pan to be super hot in your skillet. That's what makes it non-stick. Salt our eggs. I kind of like to just pull my eggs and push them around. Yeah. I don't like to call it, you know, I'm bossing them around. I like to say it's like leadership skills I got, you know, pushing these eggs around. That's what you do. Leadership, yeah. Let us see what we got in here. A little bit of pepper. Starting to cook. Now we're gonna cook until this starts getting a nice crisp brown to it. That's where you're gonna get that really good flavor. Like you don't just want your meat brown, you want it browned, you know. I'm going to turn my eggs off at this point because they just got a little bit, you see there's a little bit of shine so it's a little bit undercooked still. But if you turn off your heat, your pan is still going to retain heat so it'll finish cooking them without adding more which can overcook it which gets you a rubbery egg. And then I'm going to put a lid on it and slide it to the back. So it'll finish cooking the rest of the way that way. And let's turn our attention fully to this gravy. Mmm, all good. I'm gonna go ahead and try a piece right here before I add anything else to it. I think it's really good to try your food in its natural state before like seasonings and stuff, just so you understand the base of what that food tastes like and then adding seasoning and tasting how different the seasonings makes the flavor of food. All right, so let's give this a try. Tastes like breakfast sausage. Oh, I'm gonna go give a bite to husband. He said it's good. All right, score. Our potatoes just went off. Let's check them while we're here. See what six minutes did. That's what six minutes did. That looks fine to me. So we'll just let those rest. Let's finish our sausage gravy. And that's so great. 
I love that we love this. You know, you're always afraid to try something new. This was good. We really liked the back strap, so I was pretty optimistic that we were going to like this as well. If you haven't seen the video where I broke down the back strap to this elk that I'm cooking right here, I can link that below. It was my very first time ever, so don't judge. <laughs> So what I'm going to do for this is add some more bacon grease because I want, I'm going to make a roux for the gravy. So I need to have equal parts fat to flour. So that's probably about two tablespoons worth of fat. You can add butter, you could do coconut oil, you know, anything like that. Just some kind of fat, whatever fat you like. I don't know why I got to say fat like that, but it makes it sound better. Right, and you see how this meat's getting browned on it? You see how this is crispy and crunchy right here? That's what I'm talking about. That's where that flavor is going to come from. Doesn't matter what meat you are cooking, that is your goal. This could be chicken, pork, beef, elk, bear, beaver. Get that brown meat on there. Okay. All right, so I'm going to add about two tablespoons worth of flour. Maybe a little more because we did have grease in there before. Some people remove the meat and then use it and then add flour to the fat that way and then add the meat back to it. That just seems a bit unnecessary for me, so I just mix it in with the sausage and then it'll it'll thicken up around it. It doesn't harm it at all. And one last step trying to fish out all that sausage out of the pan. <laughs> All right, now you're just gonna let this cook for at least a minute. That's what's gonna help get that flour taste out of the flour. That way it doesn't taste like, if you ever taste a gravy and it like tastes like um, plaster, it's probably because there's too much flour and you didn't let it cook off. Like you gotta let it cook in the fat for a little bit to get that, that flavor out of it, you know. All right, that looks pretty good. And then I have here one of my home canned milks. This is from a year ago, 1% that I canned up and I've had on the shelf since. It has, to me, canned milk is a little more like evaporated milk than drinking milk. This is just bacon grease. So I use it for cooking only, not for drinking. See, just like the cream has separated on the top of it. That's it. It's still perfectly good and it works beautifully for gravies oatmeal, mac and cheeses, stuff like that. All right, I'm gonna do about three cups worth of milk. And then I'm also scraping the bottom of the pan to get all of those brown crispy bits off of it. Because remember we were talking about that being the flavor, so that's what you wanna scrape off. So you should have a completely smooth bottom. <laughs> so just keep scraping it until you don't feel any resistance and you got all those crumbs up. This part takes the longest on the gravy because you don't want your milk to scorch. So you kind of got to keep stirring it and moving it. And it might take a while for it to come up the temperature and start thickening, but it's worth the wait and the patience of just standing here and watching it. Trust me, as soon as you walk away, that's when it's going to scorch and you will not be able to fix that. Hey guys, it's been a couple of minutes, probably only like three minutes of me stirring and you can see it's starting to get some bubble action. So that's when it's gonna start thickening up on you and you wanna start really watching it. Even though I was sitting here watching it the whole time. That's when you'll, it'll thicken up super fast. Super thickening speed, yay. And just so you guys know, sausage gravy, it freezes really well. So if you make a lot at one time, I put mine in pint jars or quart jars and just fill them up like three quarters of the way. And I put them in the freezer and it freezes beautifully. So then, you just thaw it out the night before, or enough to get it out of the jar. You could microwave it in the jar, just without the lid, you know. So you could totally batch cook this if you needed to. 
All right, so I'm going to turn this off, and then we are going to start taste testing. See what kind of seasoning it needs. Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> wow. Okay, I'm going to give it a little bit of salt. Because I have not salted anything at this point. Some pepper. Pretty sure that's about all the seasoning it's going to need. Well, that's it. Let's check out these eggs. Guys, those look fantastic. You see what I'm talking about, about the fluffy? So fluffy. All right, let's get these bowls assembled. Guys, does that look good? Wow. Wow. It needs to be on the menu at like Denny's. Jack's gonna like that later. Mmm. The crispness of the potatoes is just fantastic. You cannot go wrong with a country gravy, guys. If you don't know how to make gravy, Learn. It's easy and it tastes so good. So much better than the packet. Fluffy eggs. Try that water trick on the eggs. Trust me, it works great. You know, I really like it when all of you guys leave me tips and pointers on things you see that you know work great or that you want me to give a try. I really appreciate that. Like, I love learning new things and I love that I have you guys teaching me these things like I love that we're just building each other up so thank you for everybody out there who just supports me and gives me tips and just wants to help me grow I really appreciate it make sure you like this video leave a comment for me share it please get the word out that home cooking is the best cooking thank you for coming along as I organized all of my elk and saw what I got if any of you guys have any elk experience, please leave some tips and tricks and recipes below. But as far as I can tell, it's going to be a great substitute for ground beef. And I can pretty much use it for anything, which is fantastic. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time on Mama Bert's.